Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Outliers YouTube channel and our show, Get to Know. I'm D.P. Lyle, and I'm here with my co-host and partner in crime, Kathleen Antrim. Thanks, Doug. It is great to be here. We've got a fantastic interview um, for you. Doug and I have known Jenny Milchman for quite a few years. We all served on the board together at International Thriller Writers. She is an amazing author, author of... Um, Golly, you just finished two, uh, the second book of a two-book deal. So does that mean you have eight books under your belt now? Well, no, the one I just finished will make seven, but um, but good, very good keeping track. I, I lose track myself, so. Well, fantastic. Congratulations on getting, uh, on typing the end this morning. So <laughs> very excited for you. And um, Jenny has made, uh, let's see, the USA Today bestselling list. She is an award-winning author. And she's going to give us lots of great tips. So welcome to the show, Jenny Milchman. It is fantastic to have you. I'm very grateful to be on. This is one of the first in a new, uh, you know, really, I think make the first in a new round of, a, you know, when you go out there and you have a new book out. So I am so appreciative to both of you. Well, so glad to get to have you first. That's wonderful. We love it. You have to keep us posted on everything that you have coming out so that we can always keep up with everything oh. you've got going. Um, so my first question for you is, I want to talk a little bit about your childhood. Okay. And I'd like to know if you feel that your childhood contributed to you becoming an author. Yeah. Were you an outgoing child? Were you introverted? Did you have imaginary friends? Do you tell? I mean, it's funny, Kathy, because my childhood is so baked into this book, the new one. Oh. That you couldn't have asked a better question. Um, I mean, I sort of believe everyone's childhood when we become writers has to be in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. that, that for me, that's the meaning of we write what we know, we write who we are. Um, so yes, I mean, in answer to some of your questions, like my parents gave me books well before I could write, my mother before I could read, um, my mother made up stories, like stories were always a part of my life. But in this book in particular, I would say some of the like dark stuff in my childhood experiences I faced started to come out. Um, and I've been thinking about it a lot. You know, the character in this book is a psychologist. I was a psychotherapist for 15 years. I never quite finished the degree. And that's connected to my childhood. My family and I, we were big analyzers. When things happened, we would sit down, we would dissect them, we would talk about them. So you know, the short answer is yes, absolutely. <laughs> now, were you outgoing as a kid? Were you introverted? Oh, outgoing thing. Interesting. So I think I am definitely an extrovert. I love doing stuff like this. One of the hardest things for me about having a gap between books is not getting out there and connecting with readers and other writers. You mentioned ITW, like summer camp for writers. I, I miss it. Um, but as a child, I think I was more, although at core an extrovert, I kind of inhibited that and I wore a very different face. So I think it was there, but maybe not as much like allowed to come to the fore. Did you have any imaginary friends? No, I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Um, I don't know. I was told. I'm disappointed. I don't think I, well, I am. This is why my kids had great imaginary friends to the point mm -hmm. where like, they're in college now and still talk about the time when one of them killed off the other's imaginary friend because they were <laughs> feeling jealous and they wanted to be that close. So I kind of wish I had had an imaginary friend, but no, I don't think I did. But I did just tell stories in my head. I was always writing a book. So wherever I went, like say I was reading Little House on the Prairie, you know, I would have my like Mora and Carrie and you know Trace that I would be telling the stories of these three pioneer girls that I don't know how I came up with it I just listened to Laura Ingalls Wilder but um yeah. oh that's awesome yeah. yeah I know I used to put myself to sleep at night I would always <laughs> tell myself a story if it was a great story it would go multiple nights if it was not that great then it was a one night stand so oh I love that <laughs> that is fantastic <laughs> So when did you decide, okay, you know, I'm going to be a writer and, and, and I, I have stories I want to tell and I'm going to put pen to paper. When did you decide to do that? And, and what was the steps that you prepared yourself to do that both mentally and intellectually and whatever? Yeah. So not too much preparation, which is probably yeah, my, exactly. my very first unpublished book clocked in at a whopping 180,000 exactly. words. <laughs> I was sure it should be published. 
Uh, I read a craft book by Lawrence Block who said, if you're writing a high concept novel, it might need to be a little longer. And I was like, that's it. Got a high concept novel on my hand. I'm going to be even richer than I thought I was going to be already. Um, <laughs> I, always, I always wanted to be a writer. I really did. Like when I was walking around telling those stories in my head, it wasn't so much like I wanted to be a published writer. Like I didn't put those pieces together, but I wanted to write, I, you know, all through high school, I went to the summer programs for the writers, Summer Arts Institute, which was a government kind of thing and like all kinds of stuff like that. I always wanted to be a writer. But when I was in college and my parents were asking me the plan that, you know, this very pricey education should lead to. And my idea was to be a poet and live in the woods in a log cabin of my own making, they were kind of like, hmm, I don't know if this plan is the most realistic plan of all. And so I double majored in psych. I became a psychotherapist, as I said, that was sort of like my plan B. And the writing thing really went underground for a while. I was very immersed in my education. I got married and, you know, I hate to sound like this, but it was also a very passionate kind of time. I didn't like need the writing as much. Mm -hmm. And then while I was working as a psychotherapist, I specialized in treating children and families. And I was given this very frightening case. Um, it was a little girl, she was five years old and she had just killed the family pet. And I sat down, you know, and I had to figure it out. I had to figure out what was going on with her. Was she a danger to herself? Was she a danger to others, to any more pets? Um, oh, wow. And I sat down and I began writing the first book, 180,000 words, but I was so, I had never considered writing suspense or psychological fiction or anything like that, but I was so kind of consumed by where my other career was that the writing came rushing back like a tsunami and yeah. Wow. That is a, that is a very frightening story. Um, can you, whatever happened to that child, can you elaborate on that or is it? confidential no I can't I'm giving you any identifying information and yeah it was actually a good news case like I was able to treat her for 10 years which is very unusual especially like in today's world it was a little bit before today's world and so um and so over 10 years of treatment and us really talking and getting to the bottom of things the last I checked in with her she was doing great she was grown she was living her own life and yeah Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> you might've taken one sociopath off the <laughs> no. He did really hard work. You know, when you're in therapy for 10 years, as you know, you just yeah. like, you know, ask your child, like it goes deep and she did the hard work. I think for therapists, it's really about being able to sit and connect and be a listening ear and the hard work always comes from, you know. So um, obviously you drew on that for your first book. Has that come into play with your other books? Because um, there's a quote about you from, I think it's, uh, is it Publishers Weekly that your writing is quietly unnerving? <laughs> I never remember who said what, but that's very nice. I like that description. <laughs> so yes, yeah, um, so, as the psychotherapy would. played into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would. Um, yeah, maybe it did. I mean, I hope it's unsettling. You know, Stephen King talks about liking to terrify his readers. Like, I think, you know, we're all kind of sick in that way that we do want to unsettle people. But if I do, if I think about it and I break it down, it's more that I'd like the dark stuff to be on the page. So maybe we can sort through our own stuff by seeing the characters, mm -hmm. you know, live it, that kind of thing. Um, the psychotherapy background came most into play with this new book because when Thomas and Mercer approached me about writing it, they specifically called out my psychotherapy history and were like, look, there isn't as much of that out there. Mm -hmm. People are really interested in it. How would you feel about creating a character that kind of, and I was like, you know, boom, like, let me, let me out of the gates. And, but <laughs> it wasn't so much in my head on my own. Like it really needed somebody to like throw a match into a pile of kindling. Isn't it funny how sometimes things are right in front of us? Mm -hmm. And we just don't see that. I know with the book I've been working on, I was going to do a current day. Um, and it was my agent who said, you know, I really wanted a historical. I, the more I was reading about this character, you know, going back in time, how about actually doing it as a historical? And I grew up on them, love them. Oh, so wow. it's just funny how things are right in front of you, like your situation. Yeah. And yet, um, you know, we, we don't see it. So it takes somebody Absolutely. else to kind of throw the, the match on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. Right. And you just didn't even know it was going to grow to be what it became. 
Correct. Let's talk about your process. Are, are you yes. what you call a pantser or an outliner or how would you describe how you approach a story and, and has that evolved from when you started with this 180,000 word? <laughs> I did the same thing. I wrote 130,000 words. I thought it was the greatest book ever and it was <laughs> awful, but you know, how did you evolve and, and did you change your writing method and what is your method? So I'm going to say nobody gets to 180,000 words who is a plotter. I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't, like <laughs> rules. I don't like rules in writing. I don't think there are any absolutes, but I just can't imagine. Like, what would you do? Like 150,000 words. Now we need a twist. I mean, I just don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> so for a very long time, I was not. I mean, I really didn't know how to. I was weaned on kind of like the horror of the 70s and like psychological suspense. I learned to write, and I think you actually asked this before Doug or Kathy, and it was about like how you learn to write. I learned by reading for sure. And then it became a little bit more formalized and I began reading books on craft. I think I've read like almost everything Writer's Digest has published and I love those books. And, you know, in addition to many more. Um, but I don't think I ever truly left my pantherness behind. I just sort of learned to rein it in. And so now if you go into my shed slash uh, studio that I write in, um, you will see like tons of like little scraps of paper. Sometimes it's a receipt. Sometimes it's a torn off a pad. Sometimes like I pick it up off the street because there's an idea. And so the novel is in those slips of paper throughout. So like I order them from beginning, middle and end. and. And that's the book. I don't think you could call it an outline because it's so like zany and like nobody could make sense of it. And if I ever get a biographer, they'll be like, oh my God, I'm not going to be a biographer anymore because she's, you know, given <laughs> you're going to scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> I love this slips of paper. Oh my gosh, that's got to be so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so do you ever like, because I use a roll of paper because I actually do outline, but I would say that in a way I outline, but it's it's the first draft by the time it's done. Yeah, because uh, it's so long. But um, oh, on a you, roll of paper that you literally like spread across the floor, kind of thing. Yeah, or on the table. Yep, I roll it out and I just start because it's so easy to go back and forth linearly to look at. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so do you like take your slips of paper? Do you tape them in order, or do you just <laughs> leave them hanging out? Well, I mean, it's kind of like, this is my first two book deal. And I celebrated by getting myself a filing cabinet so that instead of having the papers, like, <laughs> I, I think I was weeping before I got this, like by the time I had written five novels or published five novels, there's written like 45,000. Um, I was so frustrated with my method that really I would like cry. Like the slips of paper would be not organized like a roll of paper and they'd be like bursting out of envelopes and I would be trying to say like oh that's my plot envelope the plot envelope like overlaps with character and how do you divide so no but anyway now I have a filing cabinet so yeah <laughs> awesome yeah I was a, I started out outlining my first half a dozen books and and what I found is that I could only get about 70 80 percent through the outline and I got bored of it and now I already knew the story, so wow. writing was a drudgery because now I yeah. gotta flesh all this out, and I've, I've created the skeleton. Now I gotta put the muscles and organs on there, you know that for, yep. for an anatomical metaphor. Um, mm -hmm. And I found out I got, and then I changed the outline anyway, and it, it and I moved away from it. So finally, mm -hmm. I just started writing and just see where it goes, and I like that a whole lot better. Now I use Scrivener, and I, everybody should use Scrivener because it allows you to kind of outline as you go, like you know yeah. what the next three or four scenes are going to be, but yeah. you may not know what's going to happen after that. It's still the voice, so it's kind of a cross between that and a little bit of outlining, but mostly just hey, let's just spin this yarn around the campfire and see what happens. Yeah. And with Scrivener, it almost seems like you can outsource the outlining a little bit and keep yourself in that surprised place where you're not. Yes. Yeah. It's so simple to use and you can move around in the manuscript so easily. Mm -hmm. Just bang, bang, bang get, go to whatever scene. Yeah. Um, well, what, what's your latest? What What's coming up now for you? So that'll be the first in this new series. I've never written a series before. The character is a psychologist. She has a trauma background. So she's survived um, quite a debilitating childhood. Uh, thank you. I think they did an amazing job. I love that. That cover. is a beautiful I love this cover. cover. Yeah. Yeah. It's eerie. Definitely. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't know if you can tell, it's like supposed to be kind of a Polaroid. There's like a theme of sort of reflection in the book and they kind of, mm, you know, like did a little concept of, I don't know, I love it. And a little bit of yeah. red rum, red rum, red rum. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that's good, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's the first in a series and I've never written a series before, but anyway, so Arl Shepard and yeah, she has a trauma background and then she is given the opportunity to go after a case that has a very profound personal relevance to her. And that's what the book is about. Oh, wow. So do you like to write in first person, third person, a combination? I haven't gone back. That's interesting. I haven't gone back to first person since my debut novel in 2013. I don't think I have. I have to think about it now, but no, it's third person. And so this car this book revolves around three different third person characters. There's Arles, who's the psychologist. There's like a 50 something man who lives in Maine. And one day he goes out to pick his daughter out to greet his daughter after school. And she's not there. Um, and that's kind of a wow. threat. To the, yeah. yeah. And then there's the mom of this patient that Arles wants to treat and all three lives are going to converge, but I think I'm waiting for the first reader who's like, I knew how they were going to like, nobody has guessed how they converge yet. Oh, that's fabulous. Don't you just love that? <laughs> and they haven't guessed yet. I mean, keep in mind, it hasn't been like, but we'll see. I would love it if somebody could guess, I would feel like, because I feel like that. I don't know how you guys feel, but about mystery and suspense and thriller, if we do our job right, like a certain kind of reader, it would never be me. I don't read like this, but a certain kind of reader should be able to predict or- I like it. Yeah, I like it when um, they get to the end of the book and go, oh my gosh, I should have seen that because, you know, the clues were there, but they just didn't put them together. But if they go back, they go, oh my gosh, it's all right there. Yeah, I think yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. It's the art of writing, the art of storytelling. Yeah. Mm. For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So um, when does your book release? October 1st. So exciting. Yeah, cool. so exciting. And um We'll make sure to get this uh, up on the YouTube channel to promote that. Yep, yep, uh, and absolutely. I'm assuming people can buy your books everywhere books are sold. You know, yes, I certainly, you know, it's been an interesting evolution for me and writing with Thomas and Mercer for the first time has been a really kind of glorious experience. Like cool. I was not prepared for the deep dive into the editing process. Like I had never really done that before, but yes, I'm sure everywhere books are sold. And uh, um, yeah, I think, I think it's a very interesting time in publishing for writers. There are so many yes. different outlets and ways and that is so very, very true. In fact, we'll have to at some point talk to you about Outliers Writing University and, and our new publishing company that's up and coming and, and all of that good stuff. Cool. So yeah, oh, yeah. Nice Stay that. tuned. More information on that. Yeah. So I'm going to ask our viewers to please click the thumbs up button. It help, helps with the algorithms and to get these interviews out and more people to learn about Jenny Melchman, who is a fabulous writer. I can't wait to read this book. And if you like what we're doing here, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, back to you, Doug. Yeah, uh, Jenny, thank you. It's so good to see you. It's been a while and uh, we always have fun together. So uh, it's great to see you. Um, and we want to thank everybody for watching. And, you know, we will be back with uh, more uh, interviews down the road. And this has been the Outliers YouTube channel and our Get to Know program. So until next time, keep the faith and keep writing and keep reading. <laughs>